to have anyone in front of me. And then especially guys that I was rated above when I was in high school, it definitely gives me a little edge and a push. Trayvon Tyler Duvall on August 3rd, 1998. In Duke basketball program history, they've had 26 one-and-done players, and until the 2021 NBA draft and DJ Stewart, they've never had one go undrafted before today's feature Trayvon Duvall did it in 2018, making him the first for Coach K. The reason this fact is so astonishing is because Duke University has built such a program that made them fortunate to add the best high school players to their roster every year. They've done this by winning five total national championships, fourth all-time behind North Carolina, Kentucky, and UCLA. Not only that, but former coach Mike Krzyzewski installed an atmosphere of elite performance, sportsmanship, and dedication in the classroom. Not to mention, Duke University itself is one of the premier academic institutions in the world that carries their name with an unmatched class and excellence even more than the previously mentioned schools. The best of the best is the stigma Duke wears on its shoulders and on the court is no different. When Duke recruits you to be their next pillar, it's almost certain you will have a future in the NBA or at least a great shot at it. One, because of their name, and two, because you're probably really good, the most ready, and ranked really high. This is why it was a shock Trayvon Duvall didn't hear his name called not one time of the 60 picks that went by in 2018. Leaving high school, he was the number one rated point guard by rivals in front of Colin Sexton, and number two by 247 behind, again, Colin Sexton. Although the two battled back and forth for the number one spot, Duvall seemed the most prototypical for the NBA in that he was 6'3", long arms, athletic, versus Sexton at 6'1", and a tweener shooting guard trapped in a point guard's body. Both heading into college, Duvall was actually slated to be one of the top picks after one successful year in college. But unfortunately, that successful year turned out to be the worst year of his life as a basketball player as he underperformed by a mile, never quite won over Duke fans, and was exposed for having some weaknesses that his other attributes could not mask. In this situation, one would think it best to come back to school and work on those things. Yet Duvall saw it fit to leave school against Coach K's advice and is still paying the price for that decision as he managed to only play three total games in the NBA, making him not only the first one-and-done undrafted player, but one of the shortest NBA careers in history of any Duke player. What happened to Trayvon Duvall? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Trayvon Duval is a six foot three point guard from Queens, New York that attended St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, New Jersey his first two years of high school. He transferred to Advanced Prep in Dallas, Texas for his junior season and averaged 16.8 points a game and seven assists. He made his way to one of the top high schools for readying a prospect, IMG, where as a senior, he averaged 16.1 points a game and 7.5 assists. He was selected as a McDonald's All-American and a Jordan Brand participant, showing he was considered one of the premier players in the country. Along with 247, Rivals, and Scout.com, he was a top five talent and one of the best point men on the amateur level. He chose Duke over Arizona, Kansas, and Baylor. Stunt number one, going to Duke. Every player dreams of going to a blue blood program such as Duke out of high school, so I can understand exactly why Trayvon saw that as a great opportunity. They also had one of the greatest coaches in basketball history in Coach K. This is alluring to any young basketball player. While more times than not, a number one pick entering Duke will almost certainly be a high pick and everyone knows it going in, so him being lured into that situation is understandable. But in a rare occasion, it didn't work out. Trayvon wasn't even drafted, and I honestly think one of the reasons 
was because where he chose to play his college ball. There's such a microscope on Duke players, and if you don't have what it takes to play there in every way, you will be exposed. He was immediately overshadowed by the reclassification of Marvin Bagley, who joined the Duke squad late in the recruiting process and highly regarded in high school, even led the Blue Devils in scoring and rebounds before being the number two pick. There was also Wendell Carter, a lottery pick on his team, not to mention the senior Grayson Allen, oh, and Gary Trent Jr., who was taken in the second round in 2018. For whatever reason, Trayvon wasn't living up to his potential at Duke. He would have some games where he totally looked like a lottery pick, and honestly, I think he had lottery talent. He just didn't get to show that at Duke because of everything previously mentioned, mainly too much competition for the ball on his team. He would go on to average 10 points and 5 assists at Duke, shooting 42% from the field and 29% from 3. He had moments where he looked lost in his decision making, wasn't aggressive enough, and he couldn't shoot. Had he went to a school where he was the lone star as Colin Sexton did, like a Syracuse or even Villanova, I think he would have had a better college career. 10 and 5 before leaving for the draft? just ain't gonna do it. He could have averaged at least 15 and 7 for the Orangemen, or went to Cincinnati or Seton Hall and be much better served, having great numbers behind his number one prospect name. He instead spent one season at Duke and declared for the draft against Coach K's wishes and a shocker to Duke fans following Duke's loss in the NCAA tournament to Kansas after having 20 points and 6 assists. He should have either never went to Duke or stayed and bettered his weaknesses. Stunt number two, couldn't shoot a Memphis dance move. <laughs> Duvall is one of those guys, man. I just don't know. Like a Rajon Rondo, Patrick Beverly, and no disrespect, because at least those guys make a few when it matters. But Trayvon, he just couldn't for some mechanical reason. Since high school, his form isn't terrible besides the flat-footedness and his offhand spreading so far away from the ball and his shooting hand. He also holds it weird and brings it from a weird position before he shoots. His shot has always been funky and no one has been able to fix it no matter where he's been, even at the prestigious Duke. Who knows, maybe had he stayed, this would have been their primary focus for him individually. But this is what upsets most about big programs like Duke. This guy went to arguably the best school in the nation and they still couldn't fix his shot or use him in ways to mask it. This is the biggest reasons teams didn't take him other than his lack of defensive awareness, decision making and tempo in which he got his team involved team saw in workouts how he's just not a guy that can be trusted to make shots with his mechanics and also confidence in which he attempts them. This is where he was exposed at Duke. People watch Duke's prospects intently so any small hitch or weakness they'll pick up on it and it can hurt you later, especially when it's shooting and decision making or when you go against the grain and throw your name in a draft you weren't ready for. In this case, it hurt Duvall that he just didn't shoot the ball enough or well at Duke. 29% from three, no chance. Stunt number three, undrafted and stuck. And the final reason I think Trayvon Duvall's growth was stunted is because he went on to go undrafted in the 2018 NBA draft and is stuck in the G League system with slim chance at this point of ever getting a call up players run off confidence. You can have a lottery talent that goes on to be drafted later than he expected and he'll have a hard time in the league because players think about their perceived value. They also can be placed in a position there's just not enough opportunity for them. Going in the first round is the only real security for a one and done prospect as you get a guaranteed four year chance at securing a big contract that gives you that security. Therefore, more chances to make a good impression. 
If you go undrafted, you'll end up signing a contract with a lot of clauses in it, which means they can get rid of you at any time. It also means that the team used their lottery or first round pick on someone else, so they'll be invested in his success and not yours. He signed with the Rockets for Summer League but was later signed by the Bucks in a two-way deal, including time in the G League. He played just three games for the Bucks 2018-19 and they chose not to re-sign him. He's been in the G League multiple times ever since and hasn't shown enough improvement to mean he'll get another chance in a league like today where each team likely already has a point guard of the future. All in all, Trayvon Duval was moving too fast. He shouldn't have went to Duke. Even then, he was not good enough as a freshman and maybe should have stayed longer and improved in his sophomore year, even with the class Duke had coming in. He's still just 24 years old, but it might be over for Duval's NBA chances. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.